But what isn't quite so easy to find on the web is what's really going on inside, and please bear with me with this, North Korea. It's a one-show gear change. Yes, I love it. Uh, the US said today that at least one ballistic missile with a range of 2,000 miles is fueled and ready to launch. Broadcaster Andy Kershaw has visited the country four times. Here's his take on the strange going-ons in Pyongyang. North Korea is the most secretive, most impenetrable, least visited, least understood country on Earth. And, as we've seen again in the last couple of weeks, the most feared. I go there for my holidays. It's true, I've been to the strange Stalinist state of North Korea four times, so I think I've got a better insight than most into the country and its intentions. Yet even with my North Korean experience, it can be difficult to tell what's really going on, whether inside or outside the country. But what I can be certain of, over the last couple of weeks, in the Western news media, an impressive amount of claptrap has been spoken about North Korea's intentions. I personally don't believe the North Koreans are about to embark on World War III. The main reason being, they have nothing to gain by lashing out. The country was founded on the notion of self-reliance. They just want to be left alone to get on with things. For many years, the North Koreans had had a diplomatic mission here in the UK. And for a long time, it was in a rather drab, semi-detached house in Finchley, North London. The only giveaway being a 60-foot flagpole in the front garden. These days, the North Koreans have, well, gone up in the world. They've gone fully detached and moved to desirable healing. It's typical of the North Koreans that they've chosen an anonymous building in a London suburb in which to base themselves. This is a country where radio and TV sets are pre-tuned to government stations and the internet is limited to domestic content. They don't embrace globalisation. <laughs> Recent media coverage of North Korea has interpreted the defiant language of current leader Kim Jong-un as an escalation in the crisis. But regular North Korea watchers like me know that this language is routine, as these hand-painted propaganda posters are brought back from North Korea show. And look at this one, particularly dramatic. It shows a US Marine uh, not even being shot, but bayoneted. This poster is about 15 or 16 years old. What we've had recently is nothing new. These hostilities from both sides towards the other have always been there. They see themselves always at war. No North Korean just crosses the road. No. They stage a death-defying struggle against all sorts of adversity. The rhetoric is partly of the, the sort of communist tradition that they inherited. It's partly Chinese-style rhetoric. And it's, I'm sure, quite a lot of it is their own style as well. It's easy to laugh at North Korea. But for its ordinary citizens, who are forbidden to leave, it's a different story. When I was growing up, I didn't know something was wrong with the society. But when I joined the military, I could see something was wrong. When you were living in North Korea, did you and uh, everyone else you knew imagine that the uh, people in the rest of the world lived as you did? I thought that the people outside the country were worse off than people in North Korea. I'm no supporter of the North Korean system, and like Kim Jong-il, I wouldn't wish to live under that regime. But it is undeniably fascinating for those of us who occasionally enjoy the rare experience of getting in there and the luxury of getting out. <laughs> Fascinating film. You brought you brought your mate with you then? Uh, this is uh, an action man of Kim Jong-il, the previous leader, yeah. who died about 14, 15 months ago. Um, the father of the current leader, Kim Jong-un, and the son of the man who founded the country, the great leader, Kim, uh, Kim Il-sung, who died in 1994. But he's still the president of North Korea. He's the world's first and still the only fully dead head of state. Well, Kim good on him. <laughs> <laughs> Good on. Now, Sorry, it, I was going to ask, is that the souvenir you brought back from Oh, no, no, this North isn't from North Korea. They consider this insulting right. in North Korea. I brought this, really, because it, 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 aside from it being rather funny, it, it, it does make a serious point. This is about 15, 16 years old. A friend, a friend bought it for me off the internet um, when he was running the country. And they see uh, what's supposed to be a missile. So your friend hand. was running the country? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to think about that. Um, 
<laughs> you see what's supposed to be a missile in his hand. Yeah. So what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is nothing new at all. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, what kind of person goes on holiday to North Korea? <laughs> I do. Other than yourself, who would you recommend? Why? People, people, Why? people who are fascinated by the world in, a, in all its extremes. Yeah. And it is the world's, I've been to half of the world's countries, 97 of the 194. And I've been to some pretty incredible and extreme countries, difficult countries, remote countries. And it remains the most extraordinary, otherworldly place you can go. There are no common cultural reference points. There's no commercial activity that's really visible. Uh, I mean, people there, for example, there are no shops that you can see. Uh, people haven't heard of Michael J. Jackson or, or, or the Beatles, so what, and it's, a psych it's like a psychedelic experience without the nuisance of in ingesting hallucinogens. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like tripping. When you, can, when can you give us an example then of one sure, of the yeah, yeah. things you one, one that's, that's really... Oh, drop the missile. Don't oh. worry about that. <laughs> So, well, Freudian. 45, 45 <laughs> minutes before it goes off. Um, uh, one of the most extraordinary things you see, makes an impression as soon as you get there, is everything's built to intimidate. Mm -hmm. And you've seen on the newsreels these big broad boulevards with massive buildings on either side. And at the junctions, in, this is Pyongyang, the way it's laid, laid out in a grid system. And at the junctions, um, th let, me, let me tell you, there's no traffic to speak of. There are a few ramshackle trams, one or two military vehicles, which are always broken down significantly, heads of soldiers under the bonnet, and quite a lot of people on bicycles. That's it. Mm. No private cars. At the junctions, those big boulevards in Pyongyang, um, they're on the little pedestal in the middle of the junction, cute as a button in a light blue uniform, traffic police women, frantically directing <laughs> traffic, which doesn't exist. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? They I don't can. Know. <laughs> because they, but, but, because it's not but there is a music industry there. There is a music industry there, and uh, they took me to the state record company, cause, uh, and they gave me a copy, and I bought quite a lot of CDs, which are in, in, extraordinary. High Camp, high, Top Drawer Kitsch is North Korean pop music, usually brought to you by a tiny woman with a piping voice dressed as a lampshade. And they gave you, they gave me a copy of the catalogue. Which is, in, in, bizarrely, in English. Right. Where is the demand in the English-speaking world for these records? Well, this is a selection of so North Korean pop songs, Let's song titles, it. in English. Are you ready? The World Envies Us. Yes. Um, my Trench. I like the flat matter of factness of that. Come back soon after your convoy duty. I'm going to do that one. Yeah, you could come on your next al On your next album, Michael, I want to hear Song of the Punitive Operation. P pieces on our bayonet. Song of Industrial Rehabilitation for Nation Building. Um, Andy, they're absolutely brilliant. We're going to have to stop you there. You've got a lot to think about there now, haven't you? Not to take there isn't yeah. going to be nuclear war. Don't worry right. about it. We Andy, thank you very much.